Hey, remember that part in Furious 7 when Dom and Brian break into that vault in the skyscraper? You realize what this is? Like in hypersport? I'm sorry, a what? Like in hypersport. Back in 2015, I had never heard of the like in hypersport, which was weird because I was watching a lot of Top Gear at the time, and that made me very qualified. After seeing Dom deadlift and drive this thing out of a building, I wanted to know more about the rare and presumably very expensive like in hypersport. Well, it's been five years since I left that movie theater, and we still haven't seen the Lycan in a drag race or set a lap time or do anything that proves it's a real hypercar. So I gotta ask. Ask, why are you lying, Lycan? What's the deal? A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like you guys. For the past two months, I showed you great classes on morning routines and loving plants, and I genuinely hope that you've given it a chance. In fact, I challenged all of you to better yourself and not just in a creative skill set. To wrap up our self-improvement challenge, I wanna show you guys Modern Money Habits by Justin Bridges. In little over an hour, Justin covers budgeting, credit cards, dealing with debt, and even saving for retirement. Things they don't teach you in school, but they definitely should because this stuff really matters. And thanks to Skillshare's love for learning, there are no ads that break up your lessons on financial confidence. They're always launching new premium classes so you can focus on accomplishing real growth. And the best part, Skillshare costs less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to start bettering your life. And the first 1,000 of you to click that link will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. And now, back to the show. The Lycan Hypersport is a car made by W Motors over in Dubai. I'll let Brian give you the specs. $3.4 million, zero to 60 in less than three seconds. There's seven of these things in the world and this guy keeps it locked up in a vault. To get a little more specific, the Hypersport has a claimed 780 horsepower, diamonds mounted in the headlights, gold in the stitching and the seats, a holographic infotainment system, and if that's not enough to make it worth 3.4 million, it comes with a free watch as well. W Motors claims that the Hypersport is the first supercar to be designed and produced in the Middle East. It's got a mean face, suicide doors, and huge vents all over this thing. With looks that aggressive, you'd expect a mean engine note. But here's where it gets weird. If you look at the promo videos of the Lycan on W Motors' own YouTube channel, almost none of them show the car with the engine running. That's weird, right? Of the little footage W Motors does have, the clips are ramped up to a higher speed. They're literally making the car look faster than it is. This is a cardinal sin. It feels like W Motors is covering something up, like there's something about the car they don't want us to see, right? Many of the YouTubers that have been allowed to drive this car have never really been allowed to ring it out, and there's no footage anywhere of anyone thrashing this thing or even just flooring it off the line. This is where you might start to ride off the Lycan as vaporware, because if you're not gonna show us how good the car is, it must not be that good at all, right? But when you dive a little deeper beyond first impressions, that's where the story gets wild. First, let's look at some of W Motors claims about this car. W Motors claims that the Lycan makes 780 horsepower from a flat six engine. Or do they? Cause here's a documentary about the Lycan that says 770 horsepower. And here's a marketing video that says 750. So which is it? Did you make three versions of this car? I guess that's why their website says the car does zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.9 seconds. Their official teaser says 2.8 and their CEO gave an interview saying it's 2.6 seconds. It may not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about acceleration, that's quick. Three tenths of a second is a big difference. That's the difference between a $200,000 Porsche and a million dollar Porsche. But maybe that was all just typos or the marketing team screwing up. A number you can't screw up is how many you've sold, especially when you only plan to build seven of them, and they're all individually numbered using cool looking Arabic characters right over the engine bay. In that documentary series on W Motors' YouTube channel, they state that in December of 2013, the first Lycan was sold to a quote, undisclosed Middle Eastern buyer. That's not unexpected. I'm sure someone in Dubai would want to have number one of seven in their collection. But I'm not so sure that's what actually happened because here's footage of number one of seven in Monaco in 2014 being driven by the W Motors CEO. Maybe their anonymous buyer just let him borrow it and borrow it again to take it to Monterey in 2015 and then let him paint it red in 2016 and then let these YouTubers borrow it in 2017. 
This thing looks like it's making the rounds more as a promo car than a customer car. And what about the claim that the Lycan is the quote, first supercar designed and produced in the Middle East? Sure, the company is based in the Middle East, but the car was built at Magna Steyr in Torino, Italy. And while the styling might be Middle Eastern, the heart of this beast in the cage was built in Germany. Critical components such as the engine, transmission, suspension, and in fact, the whole chassis are designed and produced by German manufacturer Roof. And they aren't even bespoke parts. They're all pulled from the Roof CTR3. Don't get me wrong, the CTR3 is a very cool and capable supercar, but at $750,000, it means the Lycan is kind of like a $2.6 million body kit. And while it may be a body kit made of expensive components, the actual assembly of these pieces isn't what you'd expect. The diamond set headlights look less like they were assembled by a high fashion jeweler and more like a 14 year old with a bedazzling gun. Sorry, that's just being honest. And when you compare the cabin to the cockpit of the Pagani Huayra, you start to see what a multi-million dollar car should look like. The Lycan has got me questioning so many things about it. I'm not even sure if the d**ks are real, please don't sue me. But what are you gonna do? Take the car to an appraiser and have him open up the headlights? But at least the car has some performance right because W Motors also stated they were starting a motorsport division in Birmingham where they'd be competing in GT racing by 2017. Where's that? With all this interesting stuff going on combined with the fact that 70% of the company's business comes from consulting it's hard not to wonder about the man behind it all Ralph DeBoss. Ralph is a Lebanese auto designer who started W Motors in 2012 at the age of 25. When you hear Ralph DeBoss talk, he speaks in superlatives. Every sentence has the word first or only or best in it. And sometimes when he says those words, they aren't exactly true. But if you listen to him talk about the Lycan and ignore the bold claims about innovation and quality, you'll notice something else. He describes the design of the car from a metaphorical and symbolic standpoint only. Ralph talks about how the design reflects a moving animal or a pouncing wolf or how the symbolism of the number seven is crafted into the bodywork. But he never talks about it from a technical perspective. He never mentions aerodynamics or cooling or weight distribution or anything like that. No mention of anything that would contribute to performance. I don't think it's a stretch to wonder if this thing has ever seen a wind tunnel. YouTuber Mr. JWW shot a pretty sick video with the Lycan, a Ferrari 488, and a McLaren 650S driving up a closed road in Ra's Al Khaimah. After that video, he said that the Lycan couldn't be in most of the shots because of overheating issues. Now, I'm not an aerodynamicist by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm pretty sure if your bodywork is just for looks and doesn't funnel air to your radiators to cool your rear mounted engine, it's gonna overheat. But Despite all these fishy details, I don't think the Lycan Hypersport was a scam. Ralph does not talk like he's hiding something. He's excited about the car and he's excited to see it driving. So I have a pretty simple theory that might explain the high strangeness behind W Motors. It's that Ralph the Boss is not a car guy. At least not in a traditional sense. Take a look at his Instagram. There's not a single post about a car outside the context of W Motors. There are photos of traveling, nice dinners, fine wine, friends, but not cars. Ralph is a fan of luxury, status, exclusivity, and he set out to make a car that ticked all those boxes that he and people like him cared about, and he did. The Lycan Hypersport is a supercar because any multi-million dollar car has to be. Compare Ralph DeBoss to Christian von Koenigsegg, another CEO who started a boutique hypercar company in his 20s and makes limited run, multi-million dollar cars. Both men talk about what they are passionate about and what they love about their own cars. Koenigsegg talks about the technology and the reimagining of power delivery, while DeBoss talks about his design language and how expensive the materials are. Imagine looking at two paintings. One is very detailed and realistic and took incredible skill to make, and the other is a bucket of molten gold spilt on a canvas and then left to cool off. Which is more valuable? And more importantly, which is more valid? This is the kind of argument that has been going on in the art world for decades and hasn't really reached cars before. Cars are functional, they're utilitarian, and because of that, we measure their worth by how well they function against each other. So from that perspective, it's easy to think that someone is dumb for spending $3.4 million on a car that could get beat by cars that cost less than a tenth than that. But when you take performance out of the equation, that argument doesn't really hold up. So where did we get so turned around on this car? Why did we ever think this car was about lap times over clout in the first place? Is it just because it looks quick? The car does what it's supposed to do. It's unique and rare. It looks stylish and it's a status symbol. It's literally the furthest thing there could be from my kind of car, but it wasn't made for me or you. 
I've got a bit of a hot take here. I think its appearance in Furious 7 is the reason people think it's a scam. The film showcased it as a high-tech hypercar with performance that was criminal to keep locked away. Nothing sadder than locking a beast in a cage. But it's not. It's a car for people who think that hypercars should have diamonds in the headlights, and that is certainly not Dom Toretto. Turns out, that display room in the Dubai high-rise was actually the right place for this car all along. I have a hard time wrapping my head around buying one of these because even if luxury and opulence was your style, there are more luxurious offerings from Pagani, Rolls-Royce, and Bentley. But I don't think that I could justify even buying one of those. So there's gotta be something else to having something that is one of seven and is just expensive for the sake of being expensive. Kinda like how a $100,000 watch doesn't tell me time any better than a Casio calculator watch, but people buy it because it's $100,000. But if there's seven niche billionaires that the Lycan was designed for, then who's W Motors' new car for? W Motors is now selling the Finnair Supersport. Like the Lycan, it is built on the roof CTR3 platform, and it's basically the same, but without all the diamonds and holograms. It's being limited to 100 units, and is an absolute bargain at $1.5 million. But it looks like this one actually has some functional aero on it, so maybe it'll cool properly, and a lot more footage is out there of it actually being driven hard. It feels like W Motors is very publicly and very expensively going through that R&D that should have happened before the launch of their first car. Look, at the end of the day, we all love cars, but some people like different things about their cars. It doesn't mean that they're wrong, and I think the Lycan is a perfect example of that. Remember that app for uh, the iPhone when the iPhone first came out, it cost like $1,000? and it didn't do anything. It was like literally called the I'm Rich app. This is almost like that. Donut just hit five million subscribers on YouTube. And we're so grateful for all the support that the donut community has shown us over the years. Every meme, every piece of fan art, every Mopao baby we see in the comments fuels us to bring you more stuff. And to celebrate this monumentous occasion, we're releasing this limited edition sticker that says, hey, I was there when Donut hit five million. Now you've only got seven days to order one at donutmedia.com and then we're never gonna make it again. Never, ever, 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 never. You guys are the reason we make this stuff. Seriously, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys so, so much. It means the world to me. Five million people, I literally can't even imagine that number very well. Honestly, Donut changed my life. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. Uh, I love you. Thank you very much for watching Wheelhouse. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. We make cool videos like this one nearly every single day. If you're a donut super freak, hit that join button down below. Learn how you can join our Discord. Follow Donut on all social media at Donut Media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Be kind, take care of each other. See you next time.